Welcome to Las Vegas tonight. I'm your host, Dale Davidson. We are here in Nashville, Tennessee at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention where we're meeting some truly interesting people. We've done it again. We have Mark Rose with us. He's the author of a book called Last of the Long Hunters. I'll put that up for you. And we'll also super superimpose the, the title for you. Mark, thanks for coming. Thanks, Dale. Thanks we appreciate it. Me. Oh, yeah. You're a pioneer type. What what got you in Alaska in the first place? So uh, my mom moved me up there uh, in the 60s. Wow. And uh, we were uh, moved to Juneau, Alaska, and so I went to high school there. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a very wild country. Uh, Still is. 60s Alaska was yeah. a very interesting time. Just had statehood in 59. Right. So uh, I was thrown into an environment uh, that turned out to be a very, very adult environment. Mm -hmm. She came home with stories after the first inspection trip before we actually moved there and talked about a guy that had his face bitten off by a grizzly bear. <laughs> and uh, I oh, came from an outdoor family. Yeah, yeah, I came from an outdoor, really outdoorish family anyway. Yeah. So I armed myself and uh, uh, s struck out. I was very, very outdoors. I, I was very adventurous and uh, you know, I got into hunting and trapping, and uh, my mom let me go to just enjoy the state and the, That's the great. absolute wilderness. That That's had great. Us. And then good. you became a, a pilot. How did yeah. that happen? So, uh, you know, they had a, I was very interested in aviation. You're like right in the middle of helicopter aviation, airplane aviation, jets. Everything are just coming and going in Juneau. If you've ever been to Juneau, it's just like a buzz. Every type of aircraft's <laughs> in there at the same time and helicopter release. So, uh, you know, there was a little class that the school funded a few hours of flight training. Mm -hmm. And a uh, great fighter pilot that was uh, the, tr the, the leader of the class, or the, you know, taught the class. And uh, the pilot was a woman pilot named Gail Rainey. Is that right? And she... A pioneer uh, herself. Oh, yeah. She wrote a book, too. You need to have that woman on. Oh, if she's oh, around, I'd love to. She is. She's still in Cordova. We interviewed her as part of my story. Right. Went out there live, and uh, I wanted to get her on film. And that was a crazy good project. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how I started. She oh. became a 28,000-hour woman bush pilot eventually wow. after that. Wow. Was inducted in the Smithsonian Air Museum. That's incredible. Uh, and uh, so that's the kind of people I was raised around. Uh, what a remarkable life you've had. It was fun. It was just, I was so blessed, but at the time I didn't know it. Yeah. Now tell me about coming to Christ and how that happened. Uh, I had no religious background at all. I didn't go to church. I knew one step grandmother that went to church. It was down in Oregon. Uh, forgot all about that. It was filled with the uh, foolishness of evolutionary humanism and materialism. Right. And that filled that whole, uh, you know, of our natural egos mm -hmm. and their, you know, our, our, our intellectual. We're, we're as big as God. That's right. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and to a young kid, you know, you, you got lots of ego to feel, uh, fill there and being mm -hmm. intellectual and smart and scientific. Oh, all those boxes are being checked in me. Yeah. And so uh, I uh, had several things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, on the negative side, we, we had a crash there and we lost 111 people. A lot of them were students in my class that they came in there the day before uh, school started. Oh, Lord. And... Uh, that was a huge tragedy. Sure. Then uh, I had an upperclassman that I admired, you know. He was a pilot and had everything that I ever wanted and blah, 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 blah. He crashed and killed a family uh, with an infant on board. Oh, boy. And chapter five in my book, I say it. I said, uh, you know what? I said, declared in my heart that day, there is no God. How can you explain that there is a loving God out there? Don't even talk to me. With yeah. these kind of tragedies yeah, going sure. on all around. They, they make no more. sense. They make yes. no sense. To the but I had some intervening things that were odd that didn't fit that mold. Mm -hmm. uh, we hunted there in that wild country. This, you know, sea, water, sea level to 16,000 feet right wow. close by. Yeah. Uh, and it was uh, <laughs> amazing, beautiful, mm. stunning. 
Challenging. I've been to Alaska. It's the most gorgeous place Absolutely ever. Absolutely piece of yeah. God's creation. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and uh, so I got myself in trouble, trapped in the sky, flying mm -hmm. uh, in a snowstorm at night, out of fuel, in the mountains. All of those equal, and uh, you know, no getting out of it. Yeah. There's no way Goodbye. to Goodbye. X out of that one. Yeah. I've seen many guys, many pilots die the same way. I knew I was going to become a statistic. Mm. And so even with all that, he, I was, I was a, not a religious guy, uh, but man, there was something. I needed something bigger than me to help me out of this baby. <laughs> I was in a mess. This is a beauty. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as Mr. Smartest Pilot in the world. Yeah. Right? What did yeah. I get myself? And the bad thing is I had a passenger. Oh, no. So I felt responsible for him. Sure. You know? Sure. And so I didn't have uh, any other buttons to push. Yeah. And so what I decided to do, Dale, I prayed. My first prayer. Right at that moment when at you're that in the plane, moment, in the I'm cockpit. Out of gas. The engine is act actually starting to run rough. I've flown half an hour fa farther than the plane would fly on the fuel that I had. I knew it. Uh, and uh, lots of things ganging up on me. And so I said my first prayer. And wow. it was this. It was, if there's a God, I need your help now. Mm -hmm. And immediately, just like that, there was an illumination in my mind. I kid you not. You saw it. There was an illumination in my mind. In fact, I kind of looked up at the cockpit ceiling to yeah. see if there's like light from <laughs> coming from <laughs> coming somewhere. Out of me. Yeah, yeah. And I went, and I heard that voice and the answer came back. Yes. Really? Yes. And it said, son. You said the right thing in a sarcastic male voice. And I went, holy cow, what did I stumble on here? Yeah. I was shocked. And, uh, but I'm thinking, well, I'll take it at 3,000 feet with no fuel. Yeah, sure. And I'm not going to question this. A few minutes later, I blew out of that blizzard, and there were the lights of Kotzebue on the horizon like the celestial city. And I went, Thank God, even though I didn't know God, and uh, I had managed to, uh, you know, my my ba dying battery because I also had a, a dead generator, so I was having to manage the oh, the, the this is uh, incredible instruments yeah. and the and the uh, navigation stuff to get me through. And the FAA says you should have a small flashlight and backup batteries, you know. So I'm thinking, you know, these FAA guys, maybe they're not so dumb after all. <laughs> I wish I had done this. You know, I got my flashlight out. I oh, got my map go. out. So I, that was the only thing that was working in the cockpit. Yeah. Uh, the engine was working, and it started to pack up, being out of fuel. I knew what it sounded like when it started. It yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? It smoothed up. The engine smoothed up. Only one problem left, Dale. What's that? Crossing 12 miles of 35-degree salt water on wow. no fuel. Wow, wow. That's about seven minutes. That mm. is a eternity of time when you when have no that, fuel when you have yeah. when that and you you hit that frigid water and it's over that's right and that's what you're thinking of i've seen guys die and in, in drowning you didn't want to drown in cold water oh, that yeah. was like that was it it'd be mm. better to smack into a mountain yes than dying slowly and drowning in cold water yeah at night and so i'll tell you what it was uh 12 miles to get where you could glide to the airport, and I was waiting for that motor to quit, waiting for that motor to quit, mo waiting for that motor to quit. You know what? The motor never quit. I got in the pattern, sat down, and I'll tell you what, Dale, I was a different boy. When that was all over, yeah. How old were you? 21. Wow, wow. Almost to the day, 21. Wow. Did your pilot know that I was you were in that kind of, I'm, I'm, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your passenger? passenger, no. He was the one that was panicking. He saw the empty fuel gauges. Oh, okay. Right? He wasn't dumb. Yeah. And he knew we had done a ton of flying to get to where we were. And yeah. he knew the situation, which was, that pushed me into that. So he was a hunter with us. And what had happened was, that got me into this situation, uh, we were hunting caribou, and we had found a major herd. Thousands and thousands of them. And so I sat one guy down, went to get the second guy, put a little fuel in, because you right. gotta go, you gotta fly light on fuel. Mm. And uh, to get over the a, old, a mountain. The old controller back that was in charge of it back there, I talked to him that night and I told him, and he says, Oh, Mark, 
come on back to Kotzebue later. He says, the weather's going to be fine, right? Well, he mm -hmm. was sitting in good weather, not right. knowing a winter storm had slipped in between him and us. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so I, sh I shot my approach there, and I got in to where the caribou was on this last trip. It was getting dusk. Uh, the weather's going bad. And the caribou had filled up all the landing areas for 50 miles. No, nowhere to set and it they, down. And they were come and go. And so I was circling, right? And you're watching your fuel gauge, right? Waiting for the caribou to break open. Yeah. And finally they did. But the wind had switched, and I had a pylon out there we set up. So when I came back, you know, I had mm -hmm. I'm being the smartest pilot in the world. I worked out everything. <laughs> So yeah. I got up there. There were all the caribou. They're not cooperating. They're just waving their racks at me like, what are you doing here? This is our country. This is when we migrate. It's Why are you here? Bothering us. And uh, <laughs> they opened up. And I had to fly in the opposite direction because the wind direction had changed. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. So, but that was the blind side of my aircraft. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah. So I told the passenger, look, I said, we're going to get in there. And I'm going to have to fly blind to where we sat down. I know. Mm -hmm. And if we go further, we'll be in boulders. And we'll tear this airplane all two pieces in the middle of the road. So you got to understand, you just call off when we come up to Mick and the pylon. Okay, okay, okay. So we set all up. The caribou's parted like the Red Sea. You know, set all up. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, man, in about a minute, this thing's going to be over. I'm going to be the hero pilot. Thank you very much. <laughs> I solved the problem. That's so cool. Yes. Out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, guess what? I stalled the aircraft just long. I yeah. saw my buddy dive for the ground. The guy never called off the pylon. And <laughs> so, and I stalled all at the same time. <laughs> and I Perfect bounced storm. that thing off the ground. And... Uh, there were sparks flying and caribou running. <laughs> and I picked that thing, threw the power to it, picked that thing off, up off the ground. I could feel I had some damage. Went great. And about one more pass, and it was dark. And I knew I could not land there. I would yeah. be leaving the airplane right there. And uh, the controller had told me he had good weather back that way. So and I thought, well, I got a fuel stash between him and me. I'll just go for my fuel stash where I picked up the first guy, the second guy. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, that'll be my out. Yeah. Right? Well, I turned and I was in a wall of weather. There was, was no just way to set it wall. down and where you I, had fuel stash. And then I'm, trapped, stashed. In, then I'm yeah. trapped in this. Yeah. And then I can't get to my fuel stash. Oh, my Lord. There's no way to land. And I'm trapped in the sky. And uh, boy, I'm thinking, boy, Mr. Bush pilot here that knows everything, the smartest He's in guy a world of hurt, a world of hurt, has backed myself <laughs> into a corner now. And so uh, all I could do is line up on Kotzebue and wait for the fuel big. Wow. What a story. We need to take a brief break. Uh, can you stick around a little bit? Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Great. Yeah. Mark Rose is a fascinating man. He's got a great story. We'll be back with him right after these messages. Hi, I'm Dale Davidson, host of Las Vegas Tonight. You know, radio has an enduring place in the heart of America. Sometimes it's music that can enliven your spirit or keep you company when you need some. More often for me, it's just been the right spoken word or two that can quiet my mind and soul. Radio brings me a reassuring word in the quiet of night or a welcoming voice early in the morning as I shake off the night's sleep and find my way into God's purpose for my day. And always, I find the best radio station is the one that brings me the best news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. My favorite radio station is KKVV in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's still right where it's been for years at 1060 on the AM dial, hovering over Sin City like a gospel airship, broadcasting the good news of the abounding love that Jesus Christ has for every single one of us. No matter who you are or where you live, you can receive God's word via the KKVV Gospel Airship. Just go to kkvv.com and click on Listen Live. KKVV is using 
all the tools that God's provided them, like podcasting and video streaming and video on demand to produce programs that lift up our fellow believers and save the lost. If you feel a calling to speak to others about Jesus Christ on your very own show, pick up the phone and call the station. They'll be happy to tell you how. Call KKVV today at 702-731-5588 or drop them an email at kkvvradio at hotmail.com. Please join me in becoming part of the KKVV family. You'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Las Vegas tonight. I'm Dale Davidson. We have Mark Rose with us. He's telling a fascinating story, so let's get right to it. So then what happened? So, uh, there I am. I'm trapped in the air. Right. I've damaged the aircraft. Mm -hmm. You don't know how badly. I don't know how badly, but pretty badly. I've got something kicking around in the rear that's not good. Mm -hmm. And I've abandoned my buddy. I kicked out a survival suit that I had. I had a winter survival suit. We oh. kicked that out to him because nobody knew where he was and that he was going to be abandoned. Overnight, probably. Yes. So I kicked that out for him. Uh, decided to just line up on Kotzebue because now I've got no visibility. I've got very little fuel, and I can't get back to my last fuel stash. And your instruments so, aren't working? And they're... How they're half working there? Yeah. I have, I'm running on a battery that's dying. So, you know, all the things that gang up on a pilot started to gang up on you. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of my instructors had told me a long time ago that usually the bad wrecks are, they come from things adding up. Not one, just one failure. Then they have a second failure. Right. Uh, but uh, fuel will get you every time. Yeah. So now, yeah. I know I have not enough fuel. Yeah. I l went light on fuel, just like we do up there, to move in and out of those short uh, gravel mm -hmm. bars. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so this hunt is becoming a whole different ball game to deal mm -hmm. with, and it's yeah. not fun anymore. Yeah. And I get to the end of myself, and I'm in the air, and I, the engine starts to quit. And I know I've got a lot more flying to do than fuel. So I am thinking about this, and I really feel bad for the passenger because he didn't get himself into this. I got him into this, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Smart Bush Pilot, who, yeah. <laughs> who you know, made these decisions. That's right, that's right. And I'm about ready to kill him and me, and you know, it happens so much up there. I could even replay you know, the radio short uh, announcements, you know, oh, another pilot got killed, and I, yeah. and I can just see, oh, yeah, you know, my, my enemies will be jumping. Oh, yeah, Mark too, always took too many chances. That's right. You know, and I'm getting embarrassed. <laughs> he's just yeah. a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's not there too no far. No brains. Shouldn't, the guy he rode with shouldn't have ridden with him. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, this is actually very unfair. And here I was a total atheist. Yeah. A complete yeah. non-believer. Yeah. Anti-God guy. Yeah, right? yeah. So what am I supposed to do? I don't have a button in the cockpit I can push to fix mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. I have no outs. I have zero outs. I have zero options. And with the background I told you about, I had near zero faith in God. Yeah, yeah. So all I could think of... But then was, literally the light came on. <laughs> was told to pray. Us. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and had that light and that feeling and woke up, uh, okay, all I can do is uh, push forward. And mm -hmm. like I said... Uh, we had 12 miles of fifth, uh, you know, 35 degrees salt water to cross, mm -hmm. like no gas. Mm, wow. When I saw those lights of Katsubu, I thought, well, I got a prayer now. <laughs> That's you right. Know? But I only got 12 miles of salt water to cross. Yeah. And that terrible ending. Yes. And, you know, I got within and It would distance. just be horrible to, to crash just short. You know? you know, yes. <laughs> and in the film, we uh, we interview some very, very, very experienced bush pilots, and that's one of the things he said. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. do you any good to have almost enough fuel to make the run. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that was a, that was a great comment. I appreciated. Oh that. yeah. So, now, but you know what? I wasn't saved yet. I had not accepted Jesus. No. In this. 
I just made myself aware of God. I petitioned to God, and God spoke to me. Yes, He so did. So that's pretty yeah. good. That is really good. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm it's almost the like basis. you don't deserve it, though. Oh, you're kidding me! <laughs> I knew. I, I'll tell you what. My sin and my sin of rejecting God or even the thought of God all those years was coming back on me big time. Yeah. But when I landed there. Mm -hmm. Got that thing stopped and tied down, and uh, thought about what had happened. I was a different boy. Immediately, there was no arguing the yeah. God thing anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. I used to go with guys, and we would go to harass the Jehovah's Witnesses guys in, right. at campus, or yeah. you know, the the <laughs> other Christians that were witnessing. We just tried to eat those guys up. Boy, yeah. I didn't join those little trips anymore. Mm -hmm. I was not going to do that. Mm -hmm. But this is what I did decide. I decided I would search and f try to find who was behind that voice that spoke to me. Yeah, yeah. I and was going to ask you what the next step was, and that's the next step. The next step was investigation. The yeah. And somebody made a bet with me, and it was my girlfriend, acquaintance at the time, to read the Bible. Twenty-five cent bet. Mm. So I was going to be a man of my word, and I went out and bought a Bible over Christmas, yeah. and I uh, read that Bible cover to cover. And you know what happened is, I started kind of falling in love with this this God that was represented in the Bible. Yeah, I could yeah. see his justice, his honesty, the things that he held in esteem and the things that he didn't like, and things like morality, honesty, mm -hmm. integrity, all mm -hmm. these character qualities of God that I would tell you that I had but I didn't have them. Yes, that's right. that's right. I was a sinner. <laughs> sure. I was not a nice guy. Yeah. I was selfish, self-centered. Yeah. Oh, oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. I, so I and went you on were this were introduced crest, to I grace, still, yeah. Yeah, well, I thought, holy cow, I got a, I got, yeah, I did get grace here. Yeah. And uh, so I continued, though, but I had this hardness in my heart. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I still yeah. was not going to give up the steering wheel. Oh, I get I was it. still going to yeah. run this thing, but I was going to kind of keep God in my back pocket. Or if you needed him. Yeah. Well, this is kind of nice, you know. Yeah. And, you said uh, your foxhole prayer. There was, yeah. and now I'm yeah. okay. Well, you know what? I wasn't okay. I had a nagging uh, emptiness, and I was like, in turmoil, I was like, all, every day I was not happy, I was not content, and I couldn't figure out why. And I, you know, we had these fantastic places to go and fly to. I had a fleet of helicopters I was going to take care of in the middle of the bush. This is a young mm -hmm. man's deal mm -hmm. of all of them. And so uh, what was going to happen to me to, to, you know, help me cross Get you over, over the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Guess what? Hmm. I wake up one morning, and I'm supposed to meet one of our, we call them ships, our helicopters. I'm supposed to meet this ship out there, and we were supposed to go somewhere, and I was supposed to be co-pilot side. And uh, it was my day, a job every day, right? I go out there, and the ship's gone. Well, why did Where is it? Yeah. And uh, a guy drove up and says, oh, he had a quick trip to make up the mountain, right? And he'll be right back. Well, okay, that makes sense. And I waited and waited and waited. And guy drove back over and says, guess what? He crashed. Ooh. But the pilot's alive. I said, wow, good. And I thought about some other flights I'd missed. And, uh, okay, this is another Passover, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then I, I got up there in another ship to look over the, what would happen. And guess what? Hmm. There was a 55-gallon drum sitting where my seat used to be because he'd rolled over the aircraft. Wow. And the pilot was just fine. In fact, he uh, skinned his shin as he led himself out upside down. And that was it. And that was the only problem he had. But you know, he had sin in his life big time at that time. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what he'd done. And so- He was, was your like, buddy and running mate. And Wing you man, know what? Literally. I looked at that ship and I saw that 55 gallon drum sitting where my seat was sitting and I knew I would have been the fatality in this wreck and he would have been fine. And so I thought hard about that so I had to take an extraction flight out. Wow. And I'm sitting there in the back of a twin otter and an otter's on the cover of this book here. 
And I'm sitting there in the back of that Twin Otter being extracted May, uh, March 15, 1977. Wow. And I made my peace with the God of the Bible, the Creator. Wow. And Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, clearly, definitively, no beating around the bush. And I just did it in a prayer to him in my heart. And, and when I did that, I felt myself go from life to death. Really? It was no question. There was like a spiritual transformation that happened in my heart and mind, almost like the verbal talk, a little different though. It was down in my heart, down in my breast. Mm -hmm. I felt myself cross from mm -hmm. death to life. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I started uh, then praying more. Really? Yes. I, I started asking for stupid things like, they had me go b back up and extract that uh, broken aircraft mm -hmm. and put it on a flatbed, right? And here's what's like my sin burden now is in the back and it's all in pieces. That was my ego. Trip, yes. Right? And I had to drive <laughs> that thing right. 1,200 miles to get it back to Juneau. Wow. And, and, you know, I had terrible weather. We got into a whole big blizzard. It was like four feet of snow up there in one of the passes. And I started praying. I said, Lord, you know, I don't need to make it through this pass. I'm just driving between the snow markers right now. And I just put myself in the center and I got this thing back here that, you know, <laughs> you obviously caused for a reason and I'm in this mm -hmm. you know, fix now. So could you come help me? And sure enough, the weather broke and I made it through that one. You know? <laughs> yeah. Started on that prayer mission and never stopped. I ended and up God's with God's been your, your wingman ever since. Yes, so. I ended up with six great children. Oh. I have uh, 14 grandchildren. Wow. And live for the Lord the best I can a day at a time. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. What a great testimony. Tell us a little bit, we're running out of time, but tell us a little bit about the documentary. So, I uh, wrote this book several years mm -hmm. ago. It was Last fairly of the Long Hunters. Again. Fairly popular, it yeah. documents this story mm -hmm. and a lot of other cool stuff that happened to us up there. A little background on the early his history of Alaska and aviation history in there too. Well researched, I think an interesting, interesting read. And uh, we, uh, it was popular enough, it was well, a hot seller on Kindle, uh, through Amazon, number one genre in aviation genre multiple times, and uh, got some money together and decided to make a documentary film called Alaska Long Hunters. And we premiered it uh, yesterday here Congratulations. at NRB. And it's, I think it's been pretty well received. Good. You know, it's a I scary wish you step, luck with it. Yeah. We were having fun with it. I got to go back up and fly <laughs> in the same place. <laughs> That's fantastic. Let's talk about the future. We got a couple more minutes. What do you want to do? So from now on, I, aside I, from living for Christ. Yeah, always. Live. So I wanted to tell. I felt that I owe the Lord telling this story because He intervened so many times. Yeah. to save little old me. I yeah. don't deserve it. I was a lost sinner. It was a guy, I was a guy you don't even want to know. I was selfish, self-centered, and God transformed me and gave me these great children. I have five daughters. Wow. And, uh, you know, and they, they loved the Lord and their grandkids loved the Lord. And, you know, I, 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 got to, I got to experience family. You know, I didn't think I'd ever experience that. My mindset back then was, like, oh yeah, relationships, you know, I'll just crash another one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that gave me hope that you could have a, a relationship mm -hmm. in Christ and find a godly woman and raise a Christ-like family. And it works. So uh, I want to start, you know, we we're having a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun making this film. We went back to Alaska. Good. We found some of the same locations. Wow. You know, the actors came out one day and they had uh, two moose sparring in the backyard. So I got these professional actors and cinematographers <laughs> and they come out of the cabin and they don't even get their camera out. Well, these bulls are fighting it out right in the backyard of the cabin we got them. Thank you very much. But, so we thought we'd uh, capitalize on this and, and so I could share with anybody that wants this film yeah. with the beauty of Alaska mm -hmm. and the excitement of bush aviation and the great animals and everything you get to see there and, and bring it in with this story uh, to help uh, see other people hear this story mm -hmm. and learn to find Christ as I found Christ. That's wonderful and I'm so glad you came.
thank you so much yeah, for having me. You're a me great guy. You're, Thanks uh, for the encouragement. Yeah, you, you're really going to have a lot of success with this film, I feel. I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah we're hoping. Yeah. yeah. God thank bless you, you Mark. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. Having me, Dale. Yeah, you bet. Right. And once again, it is Last of the Long Hunters. And uh, watch for the motion picture in a theater near you. <laughs>